Hello everyone, my name is Colleen Talbot and I'm representing the Spina Bifida and Hydrocephalus Association of Canada. I'd like to start with a brief history. The Spina Bifida and Hydrocephalus Association started by a group of parents who met in Thunder Bay, Ontario in the late 1970s. These parents wanted to organize so people could share information, information that would help their families plus other families across the country. One of those parents was Wally Sigansky. Wally worked for Saskatchewan Telephone Company and was associated with the CWC, the Communication Workers of Canada. His daughter, Mickey, was born with spina bifida and he envisioned a partnership between the CWC and SBHAC whereby the CWC could provide funding to enable the spina bifida and hydrocephalus association to provide services across the country. Now you all know that the CWC became the Communications, Energy and Paper Workers of Canada with whom we're associated now. We became their charity of choice in 1985. SBHAC focuses most of its effort on providing information to parents and caregivers, starting with a prenatal booklet which would be provided to parents if they've received information that their unborn or newly born child has spina bifida and or hydrocephalus. There are a range of books that lead all the way from issues faced by young children and their families to adulthood. We also provide information that children can take to school so they can share it with their classmates. And there's a series of storybooks that explain daily lives of children in wheelchairs. We would also like to provide more information in other languages other than French and English. SBHAC is proud to be supporting two research projects. We try to focus our research on issues that will affect the treatment and care in the daily lives of people who have spina bifida and hydrocephalus. We want to improve their health and their lives in general. The first project, led by Dr. Amy McPherson of the Holland Blur View Medical Center, is an investigation of weight assessment and management practices in pediatric clinics across the country. We all have seen in our local papers the issue of childhood obesity is an epidemic. Because of their limited physical ability and activity, this is more of a problem with children with spina bifida. We hope to get some guidelines that will act as best practices for clinics across Canada. The second project is also in Ontario, and it's Dr. Faisal Halji of the University Health Network, who is working on a two-year project on reducing complications associated with treatment of hydrocephalus. There are currently several methods of treatment of hydrocephalus, but it is hoped that this one, this particular treatment, will reduce the number of surgeries and complications that people with hydrocephalus incur at this point. Approximately 80% of people with spina bifida also have hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus also occurs in the general population, in people as they age. Normal pressure hydrocephalus, NPH, can mimic the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease, confusion and difficulty walking. So we're hoping that this treatment will alleviate and enhance the lives of people that are affected by hydrocephalus. Although the incidence of spina bifida has been reduced slightly over the past few years, the association is still committed to providing services and information to those who are living with spina bifida and or hydrocephalus and those who will be born. We want everyone to be able to reach their potential and to live healthy, happy lives. With the generous support of the CEP and their members over the years, SBHAC has been able to continue their services and programs. We hope to continue to involve ourselves in research and to provide information, printed materials, to families and individuals across the country. We appreciate the support we've received over the years and look forward to a continued relationship. Thank you so much for that support.